going to be talking about uh, winter affairs. Uh, <laughs> interesting research has come through. And if you sort of stay tuned and, and listen in, you'll find out who has topped the tables. It might come to surprise for some of you. It may not come to surprise for some of you. But let's, let's get more of an insight in terms of uh, these sort of winter uh, affairs um, in, well, if we have an expert who's going to sort of break down the research for us and give us a bit of insight. So, Lucy Beresford, Relationship Expert, welcome to the show, Growth Have You On Board. Hi, Jimmy. Thanks for joining us, uh, Lucy. Tell us a bit of an insight to this research. Uh, I, I was quite, <laughs> it was quite interesting to see you top the tail, but can you give us a bit of a, a, an insight into the, into the research? <laughs> It is actually quite interesting given where you are speaking to me from. Uh, this is research that's been carried out by Ashley Madison. They are the world's leading married dating website people. And they have been looking at which of the cities in the uh, country, in the UK, uh, where having an affair in the winter is almost guaranteed. And I can reveal exclusively that it's Salford has been crowned as the very top city in the UK for having an affair. And, um, and Manchester, I think, is second. So there's obviously something going on in, in your area. But I think what it really speaks to is the fact that, in fact, the cities are in the top 20 are across the country. It's Newcastle, it's Bournemouth, it's Colchester. You know, people, particularly in the winter, I think, are very keen to you know, cuddle up, find a cuddle partner, but also I think because with Christmas looming, a lot of people are reflecting on who they're going to be spending Christmas with, whether they're looking forward to that and whether it's fulfilling for them. And that's often the trigger to sign up for a, a site like Ashley Madison in order to get your emotional needs met. It's, it's really interesting. And I mean, my thoughts were as well, Lucy, that maybe around this time of year, people kind of a lot of people in on that sort of festive spirit and and also maybe go to christmas parties and 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 the like really do you, i mean sort of going off piece a little bit but do you think that sort of contributes to sort of maybe people kind of going to christmas parties maybe you know you know having a drink or two and just being in that sort of festive spirit might be sort of tempted to uh you know whatever you want to call it fulfill an emotional need with somebody else yeah, I think you raise an interesting point there that actually it, there are circumstances that can make it a little bit more possible for people to consider having a different element of their relationship to decide whether monogamy is really working for them. But of course, with something like Ashley Madison, you can sign up whenever you want, wherever you are. And in fact, historically, we've often seen a big spike after Christmas and New Year. So as people have had perhaps an extended time with their families, uh, perhaps with people that they don't really care for, people that they feel very unseen or un unvalidated by. And that can often be the trigger for thinking, actually, this is the year I'm going to make a difference and, and get different needs met. But for sure, I think you only have to look at the commercials on television, uh, to look at the Christmas movies, to look at the storylines in, in you know, dramas, that actually Christmas is always presented as a time of, you know, great fun, everybody getting on, everybody having a great time, as you say, lots of parties, but actually, are people any happier? And we imagine that everybody else is happy and we're the person that isn't. I think that's what often fuels this idea of, of trying to connect with someone who will fulfill your needs, because your expectation is that everyone else has got this thing sorted. Yeah, and I'm sort of guessing that also, as far as this time of year, like you mentioned, we'll sort of reflect, and maybe they want to, you know, start the new year. Um, it, maybe they might want to start the new year a different way, really. You know, I mean, people have a bit more time when they wind down from work and sort of start thinking these things through. Maybe they're in a situation, relationship, or in an environment where, where they don't feel fulfilled. Do you think that sort of comes into it, Lucy, where people sort of having that little bit extra time to sort of evaluate their life, um, you know, moving forward might think, well, I want to start the new year uh, and, and, and look for more fulfillment. Absolutely. I mean, as a psychotherapist, I'm very used to people getting towards the end of the year, usually in that period, that lull 
time between Christmas and New Year where people reflect on the year that's gone by and also they start to think ahead to the year to come. There's a very definite, um, almost like a watermark moment of, of New Year's Eve where people think, well, that that was been and gone. Now what's going to come ahead and what changes can I make? You know, am I going to write that CV so I get a different job or am I going to sign up for a dating app in order to get my, my needs met? But I think the other thing to bear in mind is that traditionally the, the Christmas break was certainly before the pandemic. For many people, it was their, the longest time that they would spend with people that they didn't perhaps care for, apart from maybe a family holiday. Um, so what you often saw was people thinking, well, actually, I just I cannot bear to be with that person any longer. I was cooped up with them for sort of two or three days over Christmas. I heard them tell the same jokes. I heard them put me down, you know, more time than is uh, ever appropriate. And I want to do things differently. So I think it's a combination of factors. It's the, it's the pull factor of how do I want my life to be going forward? But also the push factor of do I like do I like who I've become in my primary relationship, and how can I change? That's a really interesting point you've made there, Lucy. I'm, and I, I sort of think about you know the, the points that you've made, and think you can be sitting in a room with I'm sure many of us have been there, and you can be sitting in a room like with a lot of people and and and, and with somebody. But you don't feel, you know, you, you kind of don't feel that sort of connection. Um, you know, it's like, I suppose in one sense, you can be around a lot of people or, or with somebody, but you still feel that kind of, uh, you know, sense of loneliness where you just don't feel, or maybe you've outgrown somebody or you, you kind of had similar values years ago, but you kind of, you've, you've moved on. You're a different person to the person you were before. And do you think that happens to people where, you know, throughout life, we, we, we kind of change, but not everyone sort of changed at the same pace and, and, and we kind of veer away from the person we used to be and, and it's just one of them things really it's just you know maybe time to, to, to move in a different direction yeah and I think that's why couples really need to communicate on a regular basis I, I recommend that couples do a relationship audit every single year so that they can keep on top of those kinds of developments so that they can monitor whether everyone is feeling you know, fulfilled or loved or heard, um, because often what happens maybe when infidelity is revealed is, you know, one person would say, well, I wasn't feeling happy, and the other person says, well, do you think I was happy? Do you think I've enjoyed how things have been over the last sort of, you know, year or five years or whatever? So I do think it's important that couples communicate and, and really listen to each other, but at the same time, very interestingly, Ashley Madison brought out some research a month or so ago where they noticed that a large percentage of their sign-ups were actually from people who were really young mm -hmm. in aged 18 to 29 what they're currently known as Gen Z people who aren't married actually at the moment but these are people who perhaps could live to be 120 do they really want to be with the same person for 80 or 90 or 100 years and actually what what a lot of people are saying is even when they're in their 40s, 50s or 60s, they're looking at the person they're with, they feel lonely. And there's a very different type of pain when you're lonely in a relationship or if you're lonely in a crowd to the loneliness that comes when maybe you're not in a relationship and you pine for that. But I think people are making different choices going forward, for sure. That's an interesting point you've made then. I mean, obviously, you know, you work with people all the time, Lucy, around relationships. And I, I've often thought that there are people who are in relationships. I'm not saying everybody, I'm generalizing, but who, who are probably lonelier than people on their own. I mean, sometimes you can be on your own and, and you've got a really full life. It's, you know, you, you're kind of buzzing. And, and, and I just think for me, you know, whoever wrote the rules on relationships, is, it's a little bit outdated in the sense that, you know, I'm sure there's plenty of people that just are together for the sake of being together. And, and I don't think that's a good idea in my opinion. But the point is really, I think, as well as that, I mean, is there a case for sometimes, I suppose it's, it's veering away from the conversation a little bit, but for just saying, you know what, it's just come to an end. It's it's, it's nobody's uh, fault as such. It's just, it is time to move on. I mean, sometimes the writing's on the wall. It's like, you know, you, you might do the audit, you might sort of talk about what your needs are and vice versa, but the reality is it's, just, it's time to sort of to move on. You've outgrown each other. That's right, and I think that's why it's always really important to have those conversations, to be able to say to people, where are you at? How are you feeling? 
how am I feeling? Um, because, you know, it may be that, yeah, it's time to part. Or it might be that you need to, to shake things up a bit. I mean, again, some different research from Ashley Madison earlier this year was around non-monogamy and people talking about um, different ways of, of having a relationship. And if you have a conversation with your partner and you discover that, yeah, actually maybe the two of you would like to maybe introduce a third person into this relationship, that that's always something that could be talked about and discussed it might not be what either of you want but it might be what both of you want but you'll never know unless you have those conversations so i think you know anyone listening to your show now wherever they are in the uk just think about the relationship status that you've got think about the relationships you're in and how do you want to make them better because you only have one life absolutely i think that proximity is is important it's the people we surround ourselves around have a big impact on our our, you know our beliefs our values the way we sort of go about our lives as well and and i think that's a sort of uh you know an important point for anyone to sort of reflect on really um because i think the thing is as well lucy it has a knock-on effect other areas of life too so you know in, in you're in a relationship around certain people it does have a big impact in not just your relationship life but life in general as well the way you go about doing other things and what else you choose to do with your life as well but i'm sort of mindful of time you've been kind to join us can you signpost anyone who's listening to maybe the research lucy or the work that you do absolutely you can find out about the research on ashleymadison.com and if people are interested in finding out about me or they'd like to work with me uh, i'm lucyberrisford.com Okay, thanks for your time, Lucy. It's been really interesting speaking to you. And now that listeners have found that really interesting as well. Uh, Have a fantastic day. Thank you. Thanks so much, Jimmy.